So, welcome to our July 2016 edition of Sunset Trails Cub Scout Roundtable Breakout. I think everybody here is a veteran. Nobody here is new, right? You didn't have anybody to yell at. So, I probably have all your email addresses, but please do sign in with your name, your uh, unit, and your position. I'll start with Neil over here. Thank you. And pass it around. Make sure you're back to Rob. Yeah. We'll and uh, that way. We'll, no we'll bring it back here. If somebody wanders in late and I miss it, do me a favor and, and, uh, and uh, yeah, exactly. Girdle. Just, 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 yeah, exactly. Um, so, welcome. Thank you for being Mary. Welcome. Thank you. Come on in. <coughs> um, and you lost my train of thought. <laughs> Thanks, Mary. <laughs> you want me to um, try that again? <laughs> I know. So, for those of you who forgot who I am, my name is Mike Woltz. I'm your Cub Scout Roundtable Commissioner here in the Sunset Trail District. Uh, I'm typically joined by uh, Mr. Joe Crossman, my partner in crime. He can't be with us here this evening. I think he's at work. He has a crazy work schedule. That's right, Heather, isn't it? Yep. Okay. And uh, I thought Chris might be here this evening to join us, but he has not arrived yet. So. Um, that rounds out our team. Myself, Chris, and Daryl are here as resources for you to help you make your Cub Scouting program better. Please, if you have a question, a comment, a concern, don't hesitate to reach out. Give me a call. Send us an email. I come to you as a committee chair. Daryl's an advancement guy, and Chris is a Cub Master. The only piece of the puzzle we don't have is a den leader. And uh, you know, so if you're a den leader and you have specific den leader questions, I'll have to ask. But please come with, with questions, concerns, or whatever. Um, I don't have to talk about why we do agenda signing. So we'll jump right to the agenda. Uh, so we're going to talk about a few awards today, because I love awards. We're going to talk about the STEM Nova and the Supernova Awards. Is anybody else familiar with those? I know Heather is. Uh, anybody done STEM Nova, Supernova stuff? It's really cool. Hope you learn something and maybe get interested in it. Um, and then I'm going to tell you about the District Board of Merit. There's a very specific reason why I'm doing that today. I think Rob knows. And so I won't take too much time on that, but I want to let you know what that's all about. We're going to talk about, since we're in July, we're looking forward to August. If you guys have activities, events, meetings, we're going to talk about the August point of the Scout Law and the theme very briefly. As well as to do a game, uh, and a gathering activity and do a cheer. And we'll launch right into our service projects. I break them up into two categories. We do community service and conservation service. So we'll cover both of those and a few other resources and things at the end. So any questions before we get going? Good, all right. So STEM Nova Awards is an entire set of things. This is a really neat thing to add an extra set of, uh, an extra dimension to your Cub Scouting program. If you are getting to that point where we just feel like we're going through doing advancement related activities. And it's designed to introduce and encourage our scouts to get into and study the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. Um, scouts can complete, there's, there's two buckets. There's a NOVA award and there's the SuperNOVA award. And any scout can complete the NOVA award from going, working with their den leader, their cub master, another pack adult, or even their parent. Do note the tigers are not eligible and by extension the lions are not, I don't know why. It's, and I can tell you that my youngest just finished tiger. I don't think he's ready for it. And I'm a, yours, you have a, you're oh, a bear. I have, I have a lion and a bear now. Okay. Oh, you, oh, you have a lion? Yes. Ooh. Uh, well, it'll be interesting. And, and, and you could, we could do a tag along thing and bring, bring the younger along and see what happens because uh, I could see how they could get bored potentially. Oh, well, we, we're OMSI people. We go to OMSI right. all the time. We go to. We, when we get into the requirements, you might see yep. why. Right. Uh, but for now, there are just no tiger requirements. It's all based on wolf, bear, weeblos, arrow of light, elective adventures the, for the Nova Award things. Uh, there's a distinctive patch. The first time they earn an award, there are seven, I'll show you in just a second. The first time they earn one, they get the cool patch. It dangles from their right pocket uniform. Any additional awards they earn after that, they get the really cool triangle pie pin, and that goes on the little pin, the, uh, the points in the patch. Uh, note. If you use Scoutbook, Heather knows where I'm going with this, I think. If you use Scoutbook, it tracks those. The STEM Nova stuff is in the database, it's in ScoutNet. And Scoutbook will tell you, hey, Billy Cub Scout earned this, and his uniform should look like this with all these patches. Scoutbook's formula got it wrong. My oldest kid has done two of these, and it shows that his uniform should have the cool patch and two 
pi segments. Daryl and I scratched our head for about an hour and studied the, the, the statements and came up with the fact that ScoutNet got it wrong. Or no, sorry, ScoutBook got the image forming wrong. So just be aware of that. If you use a different advancement program, I don't know what other ones do. The scout book just kind of got that formula wrong. Uh, okay, so they're the advice and den leaders or scout scout masters, but den leaders in particular. If you decide you want to do this, you decide you want to get into trying one of these things, select the Nova Award first, and that can help you guide which elective you apply towards your rank advancement. So these are the seven awards. It started off a fair number of years ago with the first four. And then about a year ago, they added the second three and they went back and revised the first four to mesh with the new advancement program because the first four originally were based off of the, uh, the sports and academics belt loop and pin program. And if you go back and you find a PDF document online or a book from somebody that hands down and it talks about marble madness or some of the old stuff, throw it away. It doesn't count anymore. The new ones are all about the elective adventures. You, you, and, and I'll get down to the bottom here in just a second. Uh, the so first one. Right? Some might. It's yeah. only electives. There's none. None of the required for the Nova Awards. They are all elective adventures. Okay. I looked. I'm okay. Almost pot. I'm 98 percent pot. I didn't I'm see this because required. you know some of the special awards. Half of them are required. Anyway. Yes. Okay. And we'll get to the Supernova. Actually, has some of the required ones. Oh, okay. Really different. Uh, I don't think I'm breaking up. But like. Science everywhere is very general, very science-y. You learn about science, study, very, you choose your path. Same thing with Tech Talk, again, very technology-based. Uh, swing is all about kinetics. It's really mostly levers. You go and you look at teeter-totters in the playground and you do different kinds of levers, which is kind of cool. Uh, one, two, three, go is applied math. And one of them I remember was, calculate the volume of the room you're sitting in. So if you have scouts that are really into math, okay, that's kind of cool. Uh, and then the three new ones are more of an applied sciences thing. Uh, for instance, about was it about seven or eight months ago we started uh, out of this world with the astronomy one, which was really great. We did um, we took the kids to OMSI and we did a planetarium because that counts as one of the things. Cool. Go talk to an astronomer or do a show. Uh, we're working on down and dirty right now with our scouts, and we took them to the Rice Museum to go see all the rocks out there. You guys familiar with the Rice Museum in Hillsboro? Very cool place. We had the on-site geologist talk to our scouts and give them a backstage tour of all the cool stuff. They were happy to do that. So that's the kind of stuff. And the Nova Wild is all about animals, animal habitats, stuff like that. So my youngest, for instance, who's going to be a wolf, would be really into that. My oldest is more of a, of a science technology kind of kid. So you know your scouts. You can kind of gauge what they're interested in. For each of these, the first thing is to complete an adventure. An adventure for the rank they're working on. And I believe they're all elected. And again, if you select which one of these, usually each one will have, for instance, the out of this world, I think for wolf, or no, for bear had two or three electives you could choose from. You select these, one. These are your standard electives that are in yes, the book. Okay, exactly. So like for wolf, there was the earth science one, the grow, go grow something, right? Yes. And exactly. that would count maybe for down and dirty, say. Is that exactly. that's how it would work? Yes. So okay. for, for example, we're, we have our, our weevil is dead now. That they just trying to some weevil. We're working on down and dirty. We're doing earth rocks. Okay. And it's it's one of the standard adventures, the elective adventures. Yes. Where do you find this? I'll get to that. I'm almost there. Uh, so you'll do an adventure. And along with that, or maybe subsequent to it, or even before it, uh, there are a couple of other things. There are some additional things that are kind of like an adventure, of go do a thing. It's usually a field trip of some kind. Uh, like I said, we went to OMSI, did the planetarium show, we went to the Rice Museum. And they'll also be doing some studying. You can either, and this is the very first one you'll see when you look at the requirements, it'll say A, B, or C. A is read, no, A is watch videos for an hour, B is read for an hour on science topics or whatever, and C is a combination thereof. So the point is, you want your scouts to kind of learn about a science topic or multiple topics. And let me give you a pro tip. The easiest way to do this is to get on YouTube. There are tons of great educational age-appropriate videos on YouTube about all of these things. I got, it was easy, you know, nine, nine months ago or so, we did, oh sorry, out of this world, we did a whole set on astronomy and orbits, and I forget what else was in there. Do you remember what else was in there? Just tons of stuff. And then most recently, I did, I mean, we broke it up the second time, a half hour and half hour, two different meetings. Down for Down and Dirty, we did um, 
uh, uh, half an hour on plate tectonics and volcanoes and all that kind of great stuff. And then we're going to talk about rocks and minerals next time. And how we, you screen these videos in a playlist, and then you come out of it. And part of it is, you know, let's talk a little bit about what you learned. Do you have any questions? That sort of thing. So it's, it's nice to wrap that up. With Do you have people actually made playlists for these exact items yet? I have made some playlists for us because I know our scouts and I kind of know, and I'm also kind of into some of the YouTube channels. I'm really familiar with SciShow and Crash Course and some of those things. They do a really good job of having age appropriate stuff. And I like to call out and say, I like that one. Now that one's a little boring or something like that. And I knew that I hit it right on the, on, on the head when we did uh, for Down and Dirty. I think it was the first playlist and it, it started with an eruption. And it was this big thing and all the scouts went, whoa! Yes, I got it right. And, and half an hour later, we just had this discussion of what did you learn, what questions do you have, and boom, you're done. And then you go on and do some other additional things. With the, with the Down and Dirty, I think it was, um, I think it was, or maybe it was for the adventure, you had to do uh, rock hardness testing and some stuff like that. But there are seven to choose from. And they're, they're really uh, varied in terms of, they're open in terms of what you can select you want to present and teach. You can take them to a rock museum, you can go take them on a rock hunt, you can do all kinds of stuff. Or with, without this world, or even especially the first two, you get to kind of choose what thing you want to target. So that's kind of cool. Or it might be intimidating, I don't know, especially if you're not a science person. Uh, and complete additional light activities. Most of them have sort of a go see it thing. To speak to your point, ma'am, the NOVA awards themselves, there's a link here for the Cub Scout specific one, there's a whole list. And you'll see for each rank, if you're a wolf, dead leader, or bear, or weebelows, you get to select from different ones. A few other references, these are kind of more general, scouting.org, ameribad.org has a great page. And then they, they break it out by different awards and what you need to do. Now at the scout shop, there's also four and a half dollars of buying you a book. And I don't know, I assume at this point, that these three are in there. But I don't know for sure, because I haven't bought the book. I don't, I don't know if Daryl's book has those. Do you remember? He has, he has one of them. I don't know if it's the new version. I assume there's a new version, because they've been out for a year. They must have the new ones. But be careful that you don't get the old one that only has the four and is only referencing the uh, sports and academics program. Question. Go ahead. So uh, you're earning the, the pie segment for a wolf. Can they go back and do the pie segment in the same area in there, for example? I believe not. You would want to go and do a different one, because all the other requirements, for instance, if you do Science Everywhere first, mm -hmm. all the other things aside from the adventure are exactly the same. So you would want to go on and try a different one as Bear or Weasel right? And then again, as they go, they, they earn additional awards. Make sense? Yeah, it totally makes sense. I just wanted to yeah. see if that made what I was thinking. Yeah, about. yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's the same award and, it, and it's the same from Wolf all the way through Arrow Light. Other questions? Yeah, so I, so I understand how you would pick the adventure that would go with the rank advancement because they all need at least one elected. Right. Do you guys have like an extra meeting to do this? Do you fit it into your schedule? Because yep. half an hour is a lot of it is. time when you're not working on something. So what we did, the first time we did this, Daryl got really excited about it and said, we <coughs> should do this thing because we don't have den meetings for the second half of December. And pretty much everybody is sticking around. So why don't we just like have den meetings on the days we would otherwise have den meetings, which for us is Tuesday. So we basically put this out there as an all option to, to our entire den. Hey, if you'd like to come earn a thing, we're going to do this these two Tuesdays. And then I think we did a Saturday at OMSI, wasn't it? Yeah. So then that now is for out of this world. We did the whole thing in two meetings in, a, in an outing. Down and dirty, we had to do four. It took a little bit more because we got to do two outings, one outing for the adventure and one outing for the award. So, but yeah, we just chose some additional days. We, uh, and I was looking at doing <coughs> spring break, summer, winter break, <coughs> stuff like that. And we just kind of, and again, we make it an option. Right. You could do this at a pack level. If you're a cub master, you could offer it across the entire pack. Just work with your den leaders to say, hey, the adventure is kind of your responsibility for whatever scouts choose to do this. Or uh, I think it's easier to do this as a den leader, personally that you focus and you say, okay, this is our den, we're gonna do this thing. If everyone wants to come, comes. And our Weebles den is, what do we have, nine or 10? It's ridiculous. So we have over half working on out of this, uh, sorry, down and dirty right now. And that's great, they, they chose to come. Um, other questions?
Okay, now, it's related, but it's different. Supernova orders are in theory designed to inspire further study. Uh, BSA National says, recommends that scouts that go on to do supernova should accomplish two NOVA awards first, but it's not required. You can jump straight to supernova if you want. The other tidbit is you can't just have mom, dad, den leader, cub master do it. This person that leads the scouts in supernova has to be a registered supernova mentor. And to be a mentor, you have to be qualified as a person of science, engineering, mathematics, or technology. So for instance, my friend Daryl, who can't be here today, doesn't qualify, he's not an engineer, he's not a scientist. So he's asked me as an engineer to register as a thing so we can try to do this. <laughs> if you are a computer scientist, a coder, that sort of thing, I think that would count. If you're a chemist, if you are a physicist, that sort of thing, either by degree, by study, or by profession. So if you have a BS, essentially. Sorry? Like if you had a, a, B, a, B, a Bachelor of Science degree. Well, if you have a BS in art. Uh, oh, then you know there was. Right, right. Well, now in theory. Or music or whatever. But yeah, it, you know, again, if, you have a, if you have a BS in physics or chemistry or engineering or whatever, yeah, absolutely. And this is a district level position that you'd be registering for. I forget the code. I think it's 70 something. I forget. But again, as you, it, it, and if you're already a registered leader, you don't have to pay extra. It's just a, it's kind of like being a merit badge counselor at a Cub Scout level, essentially. Uh, okay, so the scouts must be guided by a mentor. There is training, code 82, I think. I don't know how to get the training yet. If you're curious, let me know. I'll, I'll let you know what I find out. So, so, so let me yeah. ask the, uh, the obvious question. Shoot. Is there a list of supernova mentors there are two in the district right now, and okay, so I, know, I know that because I'm a commissioner and I can look it up. I think you could look it up as a, as a member, committee member, but you know, for Neil here, I don't, he probably, yeah. I want my kids, it's easiest to go and find somebody in your pack who's an engineer, who's a technology person, a scientist, and say, hey, can you just register, right, as opposed to, <coughs> which is the, the model with merit badges. Go hunt somebody down here for the citizenship in the yeah. land. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Not quite the same for this. Uh, it's kind of a big deal. Recognized with a medal and a certificate. Again, tigers aren't eligible to participate. My, uh, this one's broken out differently. For wolves and bears, there's one specific award with a specific name, the Luis Alvarez Award. When they transition to Weeblos, it's a totally different award. And it's harder. You have to earn, for this one, you earn three adventures. I think at least one is required out of those three. For the Charles H. Towns, for Weeblos, you earn six adventures, one or two are required. Yeah. Question. It's sad, yes. Is that, mean, so for wolf and bear, does mm -hmm. that mean they have to complete three adventures in one year? So as a wolf or as a Ooh. bear, or can it be split across? That's a good question. I don't know. Because you've got two years and two years there. That make, that would be... That's an excellent question. That's the kind of thing that you probably learn as super, Supernova Mentor or uh, like uh, Trainer. I, right? I don't know. I'll try to find out. I'm, I'm focusing on the Weeblos thing because wolves and bears maybe. But it is easier. It is if you're, if you're looking at targeting your bear, you're right. Targeting that, uh, that's, that's a worthy thing to question. My guess is the way it's written is accomplish these two and then accomplish this one based on where you're at. And it might be that you could do two one year and one the next and then you've done it. Uh, but then again, the, the additional requirements for these Art, much more, I mean, it's more a study, learn about scientists, learn about the science process, than go and do. So it's a little bit different. It's a little more yeah, academic. Right, right, exactly. Know that there are awards in the Boy Scout world as well as entering the world. It gets more difficult as you go and it goes all the way to Dr. Albert Einstein. So uh, pretty big deal. Uh, for Supernova, there's some uh, resources here. There's a specific page uh, at the bottom of the Cub Scout Super, uh, Nova Award list is the Wolf Bear. The Weeblos one is its own, off on its own, because it's kind of different, and that's just the way they set up the web page. And all that stuff is towards the end of that Supernova book that you can get, either at scoutstuff.org or, or down at the Scout Shop. Questions? Can you be the Supernova uh, mentor person and still be doing it with as the leader of the den. Yes. Okay. What you can't do is you can't be the supernova mentor of your own child only. You have to offer it to others 
you, you can you can mentor your own child, but it can't just okay. be you. It, 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 it's, yeah, it, that's it's like their I, I assume I assume you're on a list and you're going to get calls at random from other. If we're in district, I assume that we'd get calls from other packs as well. I don't know. I'd be surprised. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. I should call up one of those two Nova mentors and, and say, "Hey, <laughs> can, can you mentor our kids?" <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> Any other questions? It's a really cool program. The kids really enjoy the patch. It's really different and unique. And, and especially if you have scouts that are science bent and interested in engineering and technology, it's a great way to add that extra dimension and give them something special that, that recognize them for extra effort. Um, okay. So we as adult leaders can't earn the STEM NOVA awards or Supernova, but we can be recognized and put in for the District Award of Merit. And I've talked about this, I think, once or twice before. Um, this is basically something to recognize adult leaders, and it doesn't have to be somebody who, who is registered with the district or does a district position. And, and, and this sentence, which I pulled from somewhere, is a little bit misleading. But it's all about recognizing scouters, adult leaders, who provide outstanding service. Uh, they are given annually, typically once every year, and, and the formula is for every 25 units we have in the district, they can give one award. We have 126 in this district, we can give five awards every year. Uh, it is a council award, but basically what happens is the district collects nominations. It's nomination only. Bob says if you nominate yourself, you're basically disqualified. Collect <laughs> nominations, they form a committee, you talk about what they got, you select they don't have to give any. They don't have to give any if they don't find anybody who's suitable, or they can give everybody if there's only a few. Uh, up to for us five, for instance. Um, and then basically, the, the district says we want these people to be recognized this award. They send that to council. Council rubber stamps it. it. Says yes, we agree. Everything's good as long as they're registered and everything's fine. Uh, again, nomination only, but we need people to be nominated. I'll get to that. There are five requirements. The first and the fifth are easy. They have to be registered, they have to be breathing. <laughs> the stuff in between is a little more gray. No only service to youth. Within, this is where it gets good. Within one or more scouting district. So if you are providing service to your youth in a pack, in a troop, in a crew, in a team, you're providing service within that district. And the second one, the, the, the sorry, second and number two, number three, to me combined to say, You've been doing this, you do an awesome job, you go above and beyond the call of duty. That's my litmus test when I look at this. You don't, you don't just show up and do your job, you show up and you do extra. And then this one, number four, is uh, scouts that go scouters that go rogue and create their own weird policies and stuff like that. They go against council, they go against district, we kind of have to temper that. That would be extreme. Uh, nomination forms at the bottom. The reason why I bring this up is because, as a district, we are looking to recognize people. The deadline is today. So, if in reading those things, something has popped into your head and said, Oh, Scouter Bob, he'd be perfect for this. I don't think he's earned it yet. Big Jack has a stack of nomination forms on the midway. Go ahead, go grab one. Uh, I have a clipboard here if you'd like. You can go if you want. If not, that's okay too. Uh, or you can wait until the presentation is done to go and, and talk to Big Jack. But we're looking at trying to present these at Burger Burn next month. I don't know if it's going to happen because we've only received as a district three nomination forms this entire year. Three. So we'd really love to get some more nominations. Uh, deadlines today and talk to Big Jack. Questions? Excellent. We're in July, we're looking forward to August. If you guys have meetings, activities, it's a great thing to roll in what this point of the scout law is for August by BSA National dictates that it's courteous, and scout is courteous. Uh, I like this one, they polite to everyone, and regardless of, and they changed this word in for the most recent version of the Boy Scout Handbook, I don't know if you guys noticed that. It wasn't age or position, it was a little bit different, but that's the idea. No matter who you are, where you come from, scout is polite, scout is courteous. And this always reminds me of uh, dinner time at Cub World, at summer camp. And <laughs> scouts are chawing, food's going everywhere. It's, it's good to remind them that it's easier to get along if everyone uses good manners and is polite and all that sort of thing. Um, it's a good one. Scouts are curious. And what goes with that this month is the theme is S'more Cub Scout Fun. 
And the gist of this is, this is a great month to have a barbecue, a day in the park, a flag ceremony, uh, something like that, to kick off the new program year, to enjoy the good weather, to have that end of the summer camaraderie. Um, I'll give you an example. Our pack has been doing this. This will be our third year. Uh, we go out to our family farm and have a potluck dinner. We kick off the, the popcorn sales at the end of August, right before the new year, kick off popcorn sales. We give the scouts all their advancements and their things they earned at summer camp and over the summer. Uh, what else do we do? Well, that's the last thing. There was something else we did before that. Popcorn, awards, something else. Well, I'm going to announce our new cup master. Uh, and then we all get our chairs and go down to the forest where there's a campfire bowl. We have a little campfire, we have a few skits, and we try to retire a flag. If you'd like to retire a flag, Boy Scouts of America, Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts, Venturing, we're all allowed to do that as long as you do it correctly. And they keep hundreds if not thousands of flags in need retirement up at Cub World. Go talk to, what's his name, Bill Hood. You can get you the contact information if you'd like to try doing that. It's fun, it's a great way to end the summer and start the program here, especially for us traditional units that kind of have these cadences where the summer is mostly summer. So that's the suggestion, go outside, have a day in the park, something like that. And, and again, as we're doing skits and songs, uh, Cub Scouts should know that politeness is, is, is the key to treat others as they should be treated, as they want to be treated. So I reinforce that. Questions? Okay. A cheer. You guys know the, the, the stomping feet cheer? It's an easy one. So somebody earns an award, you can do it with me here. And we all just stomp our feet instead of clamping. That's it. And that's the stomping feet award. So it's something different. Um, again, get your Cub Scouts to recognize that and they'll know exactly what to do. Uh, do you guys know what spud is yeah. for a game? Okay. Neil, you know anybody else know spud? This was a new one to me. My wife is an educator and I asked her, do you know spud? She went, oh, yes, I know spud. <sighs> but I believe it's potentially better than dodgeball. Uh, it works well in a small group. I think this would work well in a, in a den. The key for me is to not use the dodgeball ball where everyone goes home with a black eye, right? At Cub World, back me up on this, they do three-way uh, uh, dodgeball. And they use foam balls. Remember those things? Yeah. And they're about like a foot or so in diameter. Yeah, and you can you can hurl those things at full force, and it's not going to hurt you unless it kicks you right in the nose. Something like that would be perfect for this. So the way this works is all you need is an open area and one playground ball. Uh, every player is assigned a different number, so you count one through ten or however many scouts you have. Again, it's good for a den size. Everyone gathers around the ball, and whoever is deemed to be it throws the ball up in the air and calls a number. And everybody runs away. While the, oh, sorry, while the ball is in the air, the scout who is it calls a number, and they also run away. The player who is assigned the number, uh, there's an end number, which is called, must catch the ball, if necessary, you can chase it. And then when the person that has the control of the ball yells spud, so as soon as they got the ball, they yell spud, and everyone has to freeze. And the person with the ball can take three steps, usually they're pretty giant steps, towards any of the other players. And he tries to throw the ball and hit one of the other players with the ball by throwing it. The player can try to dodge the ball by ducking or bending, but they must keep their feet on the ground planted exactly where they were at. If the player is hit, he moves his, or he moves his feet to dodge the ball. He is assigned a letter. First, oh, S, S and then P, and then U, and then D. And then he is it if he gets hit by the ball or if he moves his feet. If the thrower misses, then he is it. When the player reaches spud, the player is out of the game and it continues until you have one final player. The only thing I don't like about this one is that it's a game of elimination. The thing I like about it is players can join as they come in potentially. If you have, it could be a joining game. Not necessarily perfect for that. But you, could, you, could, you could handicap too if you had some late coverage. Exactly. You've got, you got two letters, you're coming or, in late. Or, or super fast athlete over there gets spudalicious, you know, or whatever. I don't know. Um, you could just eliminate getting letters. I mean, just throwing you just ball play the ball at a friend is probably fun yeah, enough. Just to see how it goes. Because I, I, my concern is if you get letters, then once you get a certain number of letters, there'll be certain competitive That's true. boys that will then go after certain other scouts. I, I could see some 
unhappiness. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. Just play the game and see what happens. And again, at that point, it could be a gathering activity. And this is a great one because it gets those wiggles out. It's a great one before your den meeting to get that energy out so that they can sit and listen to whatever you need to talk about. I like this one. I saw this as a, as a uh, suggestion for a, this is the gathering activity. This is going to be potentially really good for a pack meeting. You've probably seen this with schools or maybe your work or something like that. The idea is that somebody needs to spearhead this probably about a month beforehand. Collect pictures of every single one of your leadership when they were young. And you put them up on a bulletin board or something like that, you know, one of each person or maybe a collection for each person. And then as the scouts come into your pack meeting, they get a piece of paper and they get to get, let me read this to make sure I'm getting it right. Uh, early grade school photos are good or even, even younger. Uh, best if they have a little bit of a resemblance. Everybody gets an answer sheet corresponding, so however many people you have, this is great for adult leaders. So you have, say, say you have eight adult leaders, you have a sheet with eight blanks, numbered one through eight. And they get to guess who's who. And maybe you have a prize for the most, most uh, correct guesses at the end of the day or something like that. And it's great to start that conversation and people start laughing and joking, and who's this and, you know, oh, the funny tooth on whoever. So that's a suggestion for a gathering activity. It could be fun at the pack level. Uh, questions or comments at this point? Mary's going to go get the phone for us. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so those are, those are our suggestions for this month. And again, if you don't have a lot of uh, meetings or activities, you could roll those into September for your, uh, for your next thing.